y'all doing this morning? Okay, at least some of you are awake. That's great. That's great. Um, so th- for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brandon Bohr. I'm one of the small group leaders. Usually I'm at the 11 o'clock. Um, but as with everything going on with Zach and his transition, obviously I'm going to be up here uh, preaching here every once in a while. And got some people filling in. It's my day. So I'm glad to be up here. Always good to see just, uh, some of the faces. I don't get to see some of you because I'm up here at 11 o'clock. But, uh, so I want to start things off by asking you, who here has played the game Perfection? Wow. Okay, so I get it. It's a little bit of an older game. Some of you clearly haven't played it. Corbin has played it at least twice. He's got a couple hands up. Um, so perfection, just to give you a quick explanation, is that so you're dealing with this little rectangular box game, right? And you have all these different pieces, and you're trying to put them in. You're trying to find the, the corresponding slots to put them in. And there's a timer going on. And that timer is just a constant buzz. And you know, like, you're, you're, you're scrambling. You're intense. You're, try, you're focused and trying to finish and get all the pieces in. And you know that if you don't get the thing done and hit the little thing that stops the timer, that eventually everything you've done is going to explode up in your face, right? And it's, it's kind of, it gets intense, and you're worried about, oh, i got to get this right, i got to get this right, i got to do it faster. Gotta... And, we, you know, it, it, again, it creates a kind of a lot of pressure. And the reason I bring this up is because life is that way in a lot of respects, right? We get so focused on doing things right or living up to people's expectations and, uh, you know, trying to live a life that is, you know, what – at least it looks like we have it all under control or it's perfect from the outside looking in, right? If someone looks at us, we have, we put this pressure on ourselves and, uh, or other people will put it on us. And and the thing is life is not about perfection, right? It's not about always necessarily being right. We're going to kind of look into that today. Um, And we're going to look at it from a couple of perspectives. One kind of just as on our own personal journey, but also with our families and our interactions with our relationships. Um, So, you know, and if you think the other thing that we do, that, like that buzzer, that buzzer is kind of key to that game because it makes you nervous. And as the thing's going down, you know, you know, there's more stress, there's more intensity. We've always got someone, even if it's ourselves in our own head, telling us we're not doing things right or that we need to be better. Um, unfortunately, some of you may even experience that from people that are really close to you, parents, grandparents, coaches, whatever, who, you know, maybe are a little harder on you and they, they ex- their expectations are so much higher um, than what you really can give at that particular moment. And we're going to talk a little bit about, is that really what we should focus on? What, what should we be focused on? What does God have to say about that, right? So we're in, um, uh, and then as it applies to our families, like if, how many of you, um, and again, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'm just curious, how many of you, if you could handpick your family, you might make some changes to your family? <laughs> it's a dangerous question, right? Um, but it's also, you think about it, there's been moments, I'm sure, especially not, not as much now, but when I was younger and, you know, I have, I have a brother, I have two sisters. At, at one point I had a stepbrother, stepsister. We didn't always get along, didn't always get what I wanted. Um, but so if I could hand, you know, if I could have handpicked a, a family, I don't know, and maybe you guys are the same way. Maybe I would have picked somebody, you know, pick some people. I'd, I'd have, my brothers would be like people that I were friends with. Um, sisters kind of, you know, I don't know, same thing. Like I pick somebody that I know I get along with them, hoping we would never argue, never fight. Um, you know, my parents would always give me what I want without question. They would not make me do chores. You know, again, if, I guess if, I'm, if, if I was a kid and, and, and looking, you know, living in a fantasy life, maybe that's what I would do. Um, but we know, right, families aren't perfect. We're not perfect. So we're going to kind of look at that and, and maybe what we can do to help make things better. So we're in week four of Enough. And jo- or Joseph, if you put the next slide up, just kind of the, there we go. So the first week we looked at, there is enough when we share. Right? The second week is when there isn't enough, God will provide. Last week, Corbin talked to us about how our actions can speak when words aren't enough. Um, and t- this fourth week is going to kind of tie some of those together. We're going to look at what God has to say about always searching or trying to do what's right, be, be right, and that the whole concept of perfection. So God speaks through very, spoke through various people throughout uh, the Bible and, and wrote numerous books, and one of those people we've talked about, uh, and you guys are very familiar with his teachings as we talk about him quite a bit, is Paul, right? Um, Paul was one, possibly, you know, I mean, he's considered one of the greatest apostles that, that lived. He wrote the majority of the New Testament. Um, so let's, let's look at what he has to say. Oh, so first, let me, let's start a little bit more background, like why we really need to lean in to what, what um, he, he's going to teach us is, if you remember, Paul uh, went around, and his, he was a Jew, and good Jews, like, they had laws they needed to follow, right, to be perfect. There were uh, hundreds and hundreds of laws. Now, could you imagine having, like, a checklist of 100 different things 
okay, and that's, that's not even, there were multiple hundreds, but even a hundred different things that you had to check the box off on, you know, every day, every week or whatever to be considered perfect, to be considered worthy of God. Um, and that was what was taught back then. Um, the, the, the spiritual leaders of the day, they would parade around, you know, holier than thou and um, talk about how their, their good things, the thing, all the things they did, they would put on nice clothes or whatever, and they would look down on everybody else in, in, in like they had fulfilled all these law, the requirements, and other people hadn't. And Paul, so he, he grew up in that, that atmosphere, that culture. And so his search for, was for what are the right ways to do things? And how can I you know, attain this perfection by fulfilling all these laws? So he is someone that's important to listen to because when he discovered Jesus, he found out that doing all of that was missing out on the main concept that God wants us to get. Um, and so he, he talks about it here in, in Romans. He wrote this letter to uh, the Roman believers and to us to kind of talk about these topics. So uh, if you'll throw the slide up there, um, Joseph, it's the, the one with Romans 13, 8 through 10. Okay, there we go. So it says, let no doubt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Okay, so that's key. The commandments, you shall not, and you've probably heard these, right? You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever any or any other command that there may be are all summed up in this one command, right? And you may have heard this one as well. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, and therefore the love is the fulfillment of the law. Um, when Jesus came and he and, and, you know, died on the cross, lived his life he, perfect, he fulfilled a number of prophecies, he also fulfilled all the laws. And so that, like, that's the true fulfillment of the law. He, his love coming and dying for us, taking our place, fulfilled the law. It was all done through love. And if we join him in that, we are also a part of that, right? We can fulfill the law. We can be perfect in that regard as we show love to others as he has called us to, right? But the important thing is, if you look at this, is what is the main concept? It, you know, it, it, when he's talking there, it's, it's, it's love. And that's what he doesn't, well, what Paul is, it, what God wants us through Paul to understand is the most important thing that we can do is love one another. Um, it doesn't matter if we live a life that's perfect. It doesn't matter if we act perfectly, speak perfectly. It doesn't matter if our hair is always looking great, we're the best dressed. Um, it doesn't matter on social media if we, we're constantly posting Look how great my life is. Nothing, you know, I, we went here, we went here, went on this vacation. I bought this, I own this. Um, it, none of that matters. And none of that matters if we don't show and care and feel love for those around us. And that, that's, that's your, you know, who is our neighbor? We, we've, we've talked about this up here um, before as well. Our neighbor is everyone we come in contact with, right? That neighbor, the word neighbor, when it's translated, it literally means everyone. Um, and so that's your friends, your family, even your brothers and sisters, maybe those weird cousins you have, those crazy uncles. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of one of those, so hopefully my nieces and nephews love me. But bottom line is we, we have to show that love to everybody because Jesus did. And he, he loved everyone enough that he came down from his throne to die for us. And that's what um, God doesn't want us to miss. And it's not easy, right? There are some people that they're just, whatever reason, they're harder to love because they don't, they don't treat us well. They're, you know, they're mean to us, they pick on us, a lot of it's intentional. Um, but how we respond shows more about our character and our reflection of God's character than, than what they're doing, right? And we always need to try to take the high road and show love to them. Um, you know, just the fact of the matter is, generally speaking, we're selfish um, as, as humans. And so it's, it's a mindset that we have to change to get ourselves to think about having a loving response and caring for others even when they're hard to love and, and you know, they, they don't respond um, the way we would want them to in certain situations. Um, and Paul reminds us you know, in that passage and, and, and multiple writings that our, our, what we really should do in those, in those situations is rely on God and God's teaching and God's love for us um, because God's love is enough. And if, if, we're, if we're tapping into him, leaning into God and, and really focusing on what Jesus did, we can respond the way we should and, and live a life full of love, showing love to those, and which will help draw them, hopefully eventually, to, to Jesus as well. And maybe it'll impact their life eternally, which um, is obviously the goal and, and kind of our mission as Jesus followers. So let's talk about families for a minute um, and how, anybody not in a family? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm kidding. So how many of you have never had a fight with mom, dad, brother, sister? Nobody's raising any hands. Yeah. 
I, I mean, me, I've had numerous. Um, you know, on occasion, there, there was something, it, it's probably been about six or eight, eight uh, months, maybe even longer. My brother and I had a little bit of a disagreement over, um, you know, a vehicle he was purchasing, purchasing. And he was looking for certain things. And I'm like, this one right here is, it, it's fine. Like, and it actually costs a little less. And, he's, and he, he finally just got frustrated enough with me. He's like, Brandon, that is not what I'm looking for. I want these, you know, I want these extra things too. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's, he's, he's done with my help. Um, you know, it, it happens. We're, we're, not, we're not perfect, so our families aren't going to be perfect. And unfortunately, there's going to be hurt. There's going to be arguments. Um, the, the, the really, the sad thing is, unfortunately, with some of our relationships, family or otherwise, a lot of that hurt can be intentional. Um, I, you know, I, when I was growing up, thankfully I've matured enough now, but when I was, when I was younger, I, there were things I would say or do, I'm sure, that would intentionally hurt those around me because I, I was angry or I was mad. Anybody else in the room ever have those moments where you intentionally you know, cause, cause problems, um, it, you know, or even say hateful words, things. And, you know, in this world, you guys, you guys are old enough, you've seen this. There are consequences to our actions. There are consequences to the words we use, things we say, both good and bad. Um, but when we use, you know, we're intentionally mean and we use hateful words and those type of things, the, like the big consequence is sin, right? We are not called to do that. It, it is not what God wants us to do in, in treating other folks that he loves in that way. Um, so there's that consequence. And then the other consequence, and we don't think about this too much, but, but maybe you guys have, have even asked this question of yourself. How, how, how do we go about loving each other if, if, you know, at any given moment we can be mean and cruel and, and we can cause harm and we can say hateful things and do hateful things? And again, it goes back to turning our, you know, who is our example, right? Our example should be Jesus. And what did, what did Jesus do to all of those people who, you know, at some point he was spit on and beaten, and he, you know, he had thorns piercing his head. He had a, a spear put in his side, and he had nine-inch nails driven through his hands and his, his his ankles, or his wrists and his ankles. And what did Jesus do? What was his response? He loved them anyway, right? I mean, he loved them anyway, and and that's what we're called to do. Uh, you know, even from the cross, he said, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." And it's it's not easy. I can only imagine. Um, you know, Jesus hanging there on the cross, suffocating, all the pierce, you know, from the various wounds he has, looking down and looking up at the Father and actually asking God to forgive everyone. I, I can't imagine what that, what that took. But that's the example we have. Uh, and it's, it doesn't make our life easier, right? Don't, don't mis- it won't make your life easier. There'll still be those ups and downs, but it'll make it better. It'll make your relationships better. It'll make, it'll make your time with your, e- even inside your family. And I know some of you may potentially come from, you know, truly, quote unquote, broken homes, or I mean, look, my my parents. Just quick aside, my my parents both have married and divorced three times. I've had to deal with some of this stuff. Like, it's it's I'm not I'm not up here just talking to you. Like, I've got everything. We have had everything figured out in my life. It wasn't easy, but without God, I don't know how we would have got through it, because Jesus's love covers everything, um, and He loves everyone equally. And, and if we can buy into that, like buy into the fact that He loves us and He wants us to love others, we can take that out in the rest of the world and have a huge impact because His love can rescue people and heal people. Um, it already has for, for centuries. And, we, and we just, for us to be a part of that, we just need to lean in and believe it and then act it out. Um, so we're also, we've been, in this series, we've looked a lot of, to the teachings of John. All right, we're going to look at one more in 1 John. Um, Joseph, you'll put the next slide up. So it's 1 John 4, uh, 17 through 21. And it says, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. All right, so the the, the concept there is like to make make love complete. Like what is more complete like than a circle, right? God and Jesus love us. We are called to love them and and, and then love, right? They love us, love others. And we just, it just just keeps going around in a circle, right? It it is made complete. If we will understand the, the two things we need to do are love God and love others, right? That, that, that's really what all the different commands that, that even Paul was talking about boil down to. And then we can, make every, the, the, we can make it complete, make it perfect in that regard. So there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives, oh, typo, drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Another one. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Um, so how many have brothers and sisters? 
and how many love them at every single second of the, I'm kidding. So I know we love them. Sometimes we don't like them so much, right? I, I've been there. There are plenty of people that I, I love that on occasion I don't like. Um, but what he's talking here is bigger picture. We can't, we can't truly love and serve God if we're not loving his children and you know, his creation, right, which is everyone. Um, and that's, the, that's the, 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 the takeaway from this particular passage is when, when he's talking about who we love and who it applies to, our attitude, it needs to go towards everyone. And that means absolutely everyone, even those who are tough to love, even our brothers and sisters who, how many of you are, are the oldest? Okay, so we got a few in here. How many of you are the youngest? Yeah, okay, so that's, that's, that's kind of rough. You guys got, or, or I guess depending, good. They, they, the older ones could take care of you, I suppose. But what I've seen is, generally speaking, the youngest sometimes, you know, they, they've got more people to kind of take shots at them. Um, so I, while being the oldest myself, I don't feel for you too much. I, I try to empathize, but I, I bet I get you. You might have, some, you might have some, uh, some, some issues there growing up. But regardless, older, middle, younger, it, there, there's always going to be problems. There's always going to be issues because you're always going to you always have different perspectives and you, you see things differently. But the key is to focus on loving them no matter what. And so, so think about this: what is one way in your families that you can make things better by focusing on the fact that we're called to love everyone regardless of how they act, right? What is a way maybe you could help older brother, middle brother, young, you know, sister, whatever the case may be, help them, guide them, encourage them, potentially even in your family. Do your chores without asking. Do, or, or if you don't have chores, do some without your parents having to tell you or ask you, right? And see what kind of impact that can have. Do that for, any, do that for a few weeks and just see how much uh, impact it can have, how much it can change things. Just by doing something nice, right? So, so there's something to think about. The, the other thing we need to know about God's love, right, is as we... Some people may struggle with the fact that, you know, maybe they don't feel they're worthy of this love and maybe they don't feel other people are worthy of this love. Um, the, the thing that we have to understand, like the whole foundation of all of this is that God's love is boundless. It never ends, right? Doesn't matter what we do. Doesn't matter how long we live. Doesn't matter how long this earth, you know, this life goes on. God never changes. He loved us. He was love and is love and will be love for all of eternity. Um, and he is always there for us, always loves us, no matter what is going on, no matter what we've chosen to do. He loves us, and it will never end, right? He loves us even, even because even, like I said, he first loves us even though we don't deserve it. So it never ends. It's always there. And the other thing is it's unconditional. There's nothing we can do to earn it. It's just given freely. Like it, it, when it comes to human beings, ultimately, you, 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 you know, to, to gain love from some folks, you, you have to build those relationships. You need to be kind to them. They, some people even want you to do things. And, it, you know, you've got to start looking, is it really true love or not? Um, you know, it's, it's finding those people that in your life that love you for you, that, you know, want to be around you. Those, that's, that's the key. That's, that's more of a, a better reflection of God's love. God's love is unconditional. It doesn't matter how often we rebel, turn our backs, and walk away. God will still love us. Um, his love is not based on what we do, what we say. Um, he, he obviously, because it's best for us, he does want us to choose to do good things. Don't, don't misunderstand. But it's unconditional. Um, the other thing that with... God's love is that it gives hope. And we've seen this, again, for centuries. And you, some of you may have even experienced that. You've, you've become baptized in believers because you've heard of God's pursuit of you. Uh, you, know, you know that Jesus died. He came, he came to earth to die because he loved you enough that he did not want to leave you unreconciled with God. He wants, you to, have, he wants to have that relationship with you and for all eternity. Um, and if you, you know, I think one of the things that maybe the one of the challenges we have is, you know, and, and so something else to think about is if you feel separated from God's love, what is, what is a step you can take to build that faith and that trust that God does love you and will always love you and that his love is enough? Um, just, you know, something to think about as we're wrapping up this series. So the other thing that comes along with all relationships, right, as, as we get ready to, to wrap up is we can't fix them all, right? If it, some of our, our friendships, some of our families, we, we can't fix everything. Um, we can do our part, and we are called to do our part by showing love to those we, we, you know, we have close contact with. Um, but it's not our job to fix things. We, that pressure can go away, right? As we're trying to do what's right and you know, trying to live up to certain standards and expectations, our focus needs to be, we can take it off of that and just focus on God. It is God's job, 
right? If we will, we will pray. So, you know, that's step one, pray. Um, and trust, trust God's love. Trust that God's love can overcome anything, absolutely anything. Um, it is the most powerful, you know, force in the universe. So, so accept that. Let, let our mind and our heart buy into that and believe it. Um, and then, you know, God's love is always enough. I, Jojo, if you want to go ahead, Joseph, if you want to go ahead and put that, the last thing. Like I said, the whole God's love is always enough, right? That's, that's how we're wrapping up this series. It's always enough. It always will be. And if we can buy that, internalize that, it will help us going forward. And, and then lastly, we've talked about this, show love. Um, when, when someone's mean to you, someone does something, even if it's intentional, as opposed to reacting in a negative way or fighting back, respond in kindness. Show love. Look for ways that we can see you know, and meet needs in the world. Show love. That's, that, that's the part that we're called to do is to pray, trust God, and to show love ourselves. So um, go ahead and throw the last slide up there. Then, so as we, as we wrap up and get ready to go to small groups, these are the three things I kind of want to leave you with. So again, let God's love be enough. Just trust God and know his love can overcome anything, right? And he loves us. He loves others. And so let that be our motivation as well. Um, the fact that no matter what we do, God will still love us. Um, but that he loves us enough that he wants us to do better um, and move forward because he knows it's, what, it's what's best for us and it'll help make our life better, even if it's not easier. So let that motivate you as you, you go out and you know, you're, you're interacting with people, you have those relationships you're working on. And then also let, let Jesus, let, let, let that love be your example. Again, how did Jesus handle everything? Um, there, there is no greater example of love than what, how Jesus lived his life and ultimately paying that, the sacrifice on the cross. So. Um, hopefully you can take those three things with you. Hopefully you've got at least something from this message. As we go into small groups, let me pray, and then we'll break out.